All right, welcome back to ABA Exam Review and a new series, which we think should be a lot of fun. This is going to be our BCBA mini mock series. A lot of people have been asking for this for quite a while. And the difference between this and our typical practice exams is in this series, we're gonna take five questions and use those to really focus on a task list item, a task list area, or maybe a term or concept that we think needs to be covered. Additionally, if you have something that you're struggling with or you just want more clarity on, or just in general, if there's a topic you want questions about, please leave a comment below and we'll make a mini mock on that topic or question that you have. So, should be a lot of fun, should be kind of interactive. Uh, we're looking forward to it. As always, be sure to check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you do pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Subscribe for all of our video updates. As usual, work hard, study hard, and let's go. Lori notices that a resident frequently refuses to participate in community outings. Lori collects ABC data for three weeks and determines that refusal occurs most often when outings involve crowded locations. Lori then modifies the schedule to include less crowded venues and observes that refusal behavior decreases from an average of 80% of opportunities to 15% of opportunities. Which goal of behavior analysis as a science is best exemplified by the decrease in refusal behavior following the schedule modification? So you may have guessed, we are starting with the very beginning of the task list, and we are looking at description, prediction, and control. What is description? With the description, we are simply describing a behavior. What happens? What happens with the behavior? That's it. With prediction, we're actually trying to hypothesize some sort of correlation in the environment and the behavior. Then with control, we are intervening and actually taking control and changing the behavior. So if Lori sees a resident isn't participating and she collects all of the data and then modifies a schedule, so intervenes, and then sees that refusal behavior has decreased from 80% to 15%, has Lori described the behavior, predicted behavior, predicted the behavior, or controlled the behavior? Well, Lori has controlled the behavior. She's done all the assessment. She's done all the work. We are looking at the decrease in refusal behavior due to the intervention. And that is going to be our control aspect. She's moved beyond the hypothesis and she's actually used an intervention to change the behavior. Dr. Martinez is supervising a new analyst who suggests that a client's aggressive behavior occurs because the client wants attention and chooses to act out when frustrated. Dr. Martinez explains that behavior analysts assume all behavior has identifiable causes in the environment and organism's history, and that terms like wants and chooses should be replaced with observable environmental variables. What philosophical assumption is Dr. Martinez emphasizing? So on our philosophical assumption questions and on the dimension questions, you want to be very precise in your answer because there's plenty of crossover across all the assumptions and all the dimensions. So be very specific and think about what is the question leading you towards. Now you have Dr. Martinez who has an analyst who says aggressive behavior occurs because the client wants attention and chooses to act out. Now Dr. Martinez says we should assume all behavior has identifiable causes in the environment and organism's history and wants and chooses should be observed or replaced with environmental variables. So what Dr. Martinez is telling this analyst is that instead of saying the behavior happens because the client wants to do it, there's got to be a reason for it, right? And so when there's a reason for behavior, what are we describing? What is the assumption? A, parsimony. Parsimony says we're going with the most simplest explanation first. Now, once it chooses, seems a little more simple to, than observable environmental variables. So I'd say parsimony's out. Pragmatism. Pragmatism says our decisions are based on objective reality and how we believe the outcome will be achieved with our decision. The best deci Our decision is based on what we believe will lead to the best outcome. In this case, we're not quite there yet. Dr. Martinez hasn't made a choice about any intervention. He just he or she is just explaining to the analyst that we need to find a reason for the behavior. 
And when there's a reason for the behavior, we call that determinism, right? Behavior is lawful, or the universe is lawful and orderly. Behavior happens for a reason. Once and chooses, we're just brushing away any reason. Dr. Martinez says we need to identify a cause, either in the environment or the history, that, le that is leading to this behavior. And then empiricism. Empiricism says we are using objective, observable data in our decision making, in our interventions, in our adjustments. Well, we're not there yet. They aren't taking data yet. They're still discussing why the behavior is occurring. And in this case, Dr. Martinez is being deterministic about the behavior. A parent tells their BCBA, I understand that my child screams to get attention, but why does he want my attention so badly? What's going on in his mind? From the perspective of radical behaviorism, what is the most appropriate response? This won't be an unusual question, actually, from clients, right? They want, they want to know what's going on with their child, not just environmentally. We're ABA people, so we're worried about the environment, but they want to know what's going on inside. What does radical behaviorism say about what goes on inside or those private events? Well, radical behavior, behaviorism says private events are behaviors just like public events. The only difference is they're not observable. In this case, the, BC, the parent says, well, I know the function is attention, but why? What's going on in the mind? So they're looking for those private events. How should you respond as a BCBA working with this child? Hey, your child's mental desire for attention is a private event that we can address through cognitive restructuring techniques. Is that what we do in ABA? We do not, right? It is a private event. We're not going to address them through cognitive restructuring techniques in ABA. B, your child's wanting attention is itself a behavior shaped by a history of reinforcement when attention was provided. Okay, that's pretty good, right? We can now point to these operant, right, observable reasons public reasons for behavior. B's pretty good. C, we should focus on observable behavior rather than trying to understand internal mental states. Now, just because we're not going to use cognitive restructuring techniques doesn't mean we aren't trying to understand or empathize or utilize mental states. They exist, and we've got to admit they exist. It has to be part of the equation. So we can't just say disregard feelings, disregard the mind altogether. D, mental states don't exist in radical behaviorism, so we cannot answer questions about internal experiences. That, of course, is just factually wrong, right? Radical behaviorism is all about public and private events. So what is the most appropriate response here? Well, the child's wanting attention is shaped by a history of reinforcement when attention was provided. Which of the following scenarios best represents the experimental analysis of behavior rather than applied behavior analysis? Now, this is always a tricky one to explain because it really can get kind of pedantic or kind of granular in the explanation, right? I like to think about it and explain it as EAB is when we're, we're in a, a, a controlled, very controlled laboratory often with animals think about skinner and using rate of responses and his cumulative recorder and we're not necessarily putting theories into the field test into a into socially valid behavior change right we're just looking at or or, or researching behavior okay applied behavior analysis contrary to practice of applied behavior analysis is is using our behavior principles for to, to look at socially valid behaviors. And so it gets a little convoluted. So you want to think of EAB as that initial Skinner way of just looking at behavior, not necessarily going into a field and trying to change socially valid behavior, right? The research. ABA, now we're trying to make that change, okay? So how do we, what scenario is going to represent EAB over ABA? A, a researcher conducts a parametric analysis of different fixed ratio schedules on lever pressing and laboratory rats to understand schedule effects on response patterns. Now, the reason I like to use the animals as EAB is one, Skinner used pigeons, and two, when we're studying the animals, we're not typically going to be looking at socially valid human behavior, right? So A is a pretty obvious choice. 
B, a behavior analyst implements a token economy in a classroom to increase student homework completion. This is classic ABA, right? C, a behavior analyst conducts a functional analysis to identify the function of self-injurious behavior in a client with developmental disabilities. So the difference here is this is a socially valid uh, functional analysis in the field with the client or with the, with the, with, with the client to address a need much more applied rather than just experimental. And you've got to think of those keywords, applied versus experimental. And then D, a clinical supervisor trains staff on implementing discrete trial teaching procedures with fidelity. That, of course, is going to be ABA or even practice of ABA, right? Where we're actually using what we're learning and then using it with staff and in the field. So this one, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's going to be the one where we're not looking at socially valid behaviors. We're not implementing necessarily. We're just looking at, we're, we're experimenting with behavior to gain knowledge. A graduate student presents their thesis research to their advisor. The study examined whether teaching children to identify emotions on flashcards would reduce tantrum behavior at home. Results showed that four out of five participants could identify emotions with 90% accuracy, but tantrum behavior did not change. The advisor states that while the study was methodologi methodologically sound, I can't say that word, it does not qualify as applied behavior analysis. Which dimension of ABA is most lacking in this study? And we'll finish with a dimension question. Dimensions, just like assumptions, precise and specific. We have a situation, graduate student presents research, examined whether children who learn to identify emotions would reduce tantrum behavior. Participants identified emotions, but tantrum behavior did not change. What are we lacking then in this case? A, is this applied? Well, of course, right? It is, it's working in these socially valid settings, working on socially valid behavior. Is it B, behavioral? It looks very behavioral, right? They, they are looking at teaching one thing to reduce another, and they've, they've studied it, and they've, they've measured it, and they observe the behavior. It seems behavioral. Technological, do we know? Can we say for sure? We don't quite know, right? We don't know what the plan necessarily was. So that's probably the best answer just because we don't know so far. But then we have an even better answer, which is why we always read every answer choice, effective. This was not effective, right? Four out of five participants... They're identifying emotions, but tantrum behavior didn't change. So who cares about the emotions if the tantrum behavior didn't reduce? That's the whole point. So if we're not effective, we're not making meaningful change. So the dimension of ABA most lacking is effective. All right, thanks for watching. Once again, new mock exam series. Very excited. Should be a lot of fun. If you have a topic or a question or a term that you would like covered, we can even do one or two questions at a time. Put it in a comment below, okay? And we'll get to it in a future mock exam. We'll do one of these a week, and then we'll also get a new practice exam rolling here shortly. We're also going to start, I believe, live streaming on YouTube uh, once or twice a week. Just kind of a, a short Q&A and, and answering questions as we go. So a lot of exciting things as we move towards 2026, if you're watching this now or in the future. Um, other than that, uh, subscribe for all of those updates. Check out our website for study materials. Please keep sharing with your friends. It means a lot to us. And other than that, work hard, study hard, and we'll see you soon.